We should do a game where it's like the loser has to take a shot at this. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Hi, I'm Ricky Wang, and I am a professional bartender and mixologist here in LA. Today, my friends at Watcher have challenged me to make a drink that's never been made before based on one special ingredient. So last time we did Hot Cheetos, which I'm half traumatized by because it was so crazy, but I think the drink actually turned out pretty decent. I'm scared that I can't outdo the Hot Cheetos drink because it was so crazy. So I hope this time I get an ingredient that I can work with. I'm gonna Bring the heat, baby. We'd like to give a big thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. What is Scentbird? Well, Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that brings a brand new designer fragrance to your door every month for just $16. They have a huge selection of perfumes, colognes, and unisex options from over 600 designer and indie brands, such as Gucci, Prada, and Vince Camuto. And if you need to skip a month, there is no penalty for doing so. Scentbird fragrances come in 30-day supply bottles, and they're eight times bigger than regular sample sizes. The perfect size to carry on the go. As a subscriber, you have the option to upgrade your subscription box at any time to receive two or three of these bottles per month if you really want to experiment, get kind of freaky. You know, I actually took Scentbird's recommendation quiz online to find the best fragrance matches for me. They sent me Maritime Deep Blue from Tommy Bahama, which smells nice and woody. I also got to try Silver Lake by Bentley, a refreshing citrusy scent. I also got to try Brioni, Get a Room by Confessions of a Rebel, and Colonia Futura by Aqua de Parma. Use our promo code and you'll get 55% off your first month with Scentbird, which means you'll pay just $7 for your first box. A big thank you again to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. And now, back to the show. Ricky, take it away. Let's see what today's food is and who's giving me the challenge. <sighs> Here's the box again. I feel like I'm in an episode of Squid Game. All right, let's see what's inside. Wish me luck. It's from Shane. Oh! Hey there, Ricky. It's me, your boy. Ha <laughs> ha. He wrote the ha ha. That's my catchphrase. It's me, Shane. I hope you'll be charmed by the funny little challenge I have for you today. Lucky charms. Was I supposed to build up to that more? I'll do it again, and this time, I want you to slap your belly like a drum roll. Lucky Charms! <laughs> Good luck, and have fun making a Lucky Charms cocktail for me. Not too sweet, maybe even a little smoky. Heart shame. Um, you guys, I have an admission. I've never eaten Lucky Charms before. <laughs> Should I open it up and try it? This is so cute. Mmm. I've been missing out my whole life on Lucky Charms. The flavor to me is sweet but subtle. When I see the marshmallows, I think like a sugar attack. It's actually pretty well balanced with the oat pieces. You know, I feel like I could do something with this. Shane is a new friend, so I don't know his flavor profiles yet. He's mentioned that he's liked cream-based drinks before. And from my understanding, Shane likes a sophisticated drink. I think the tricky thing is I want to incorporate every part of the cereal, including the oat pieces. The marshmallow, I feel like, would be a nice, easy thing to do, but the oat pieces, so it's oat. I have an idea. I kind of want to make a clarified milk punch. A clarified milk punch, I think, dates back to the 1800s, and it's making a resurgence now in like modern cocktail bars. And it's a process of adding like citrus, like lemon to milk, and then it separates the curds and the whey, and you get the clarified milk, and that's a punch. The clarified milk punch is gonna be clear. I can garnish with cereal pieces, but that's so obvious. I think what I want to do is I want to add a Savayon cream on top, like a whipped cream. I wanna make it green because it's Lucky Charms, and I like a theme. And I'm gonna add some crushed oat pieces on top that I'm gonna crush with sea salt and graham crackers. In my head, it's going 
to taste good, but there are a lot of factors that could go wrong. I wanna go grocery shopping and I wanna come back and we're gonna make a Lucky Charms clarified milk punch, baby. I am back in the store. I got everything I could possibly need, but before we start, whew, now I'm ready. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna infuse a marshmallow in the milk. I wanna melt the marshmallows. I don't know if it's gonna melt like a normal jet puffed marshmallow, but we'll see. When I said I brought everything that I could possibly think of, you didn't think a microwave, did you? <laughs> This is worth a shot, where the sky's the limit. <laughs> so my tactic is I am going to pick out the marshmallow pieces. I really hope it melts, because if it doesn't, I'm gonna need to do plan B, and I don't know what plan B is. And after that shot, it's gonna be really hard for me. <laughs> okay, this is just a test, so I just hope that this melts. God, I'm scared. Oh, this is clumping together. I'm gonna try it. Oh, this is too dry to melt. Great, I brought this microwave for nothing. So I'm trying to melt it into the milk. If I let it sit, you know when you eat cereal, it infuses into the milk by the end? This is gonna be crazy, but I have my sous vide with me. This might be the return of the sous vide. So while I have my sous vide up and running, I am going to infuse milk with these marshmallow pieces, just like mom used to make. So the whole point of this is to extract the marshmallow flavor into the milk and to speed up the process, we're gonna heat it up in the sous vide so it infuses properly. So the recipe that I'm gonna use calls for one cup of milk. I wanna add a little bit more because I wanna taste test the marshmallow milk after. And we're putting this in a bag. So it's already starting to infuse, but I think once I add it in the sous vide, it's gonna just speed up the process and like really extract it. I'm gonna let this sit and rest for about 10 minutes and we'll check back on it, make sure the color is right. Okay, I think it's done. Let's check in to see what it looks like. That looks beautiful. I know it looks so crazy, but like, look at that milk. I think we're ready to rock and roll. This came out pretty well. This is kind of in the ballpark of what I wanted, which was like a marshmallow infused milk. So it has the nuances, it has the fragrance, it has the flavor. I'm pretty happy with this. We could set this aside and move on to hurdle number two, three, four, five, and six. Now I'm gonna be making the cocktail base in this pitcher, which is gonna be added to the milk. I'm going to be making a matcha young Thai coconut milk punch because this is worth a shot. First step, just casually open up a young Thai coconut, which I'm sure you guys have all done. Apparently the first step you gotta do is you gotta shave off the husk. Oh my God, this is gonna be tragic if I can't get this open. My life depends on this coconut. <gasps> it's open! I did it, mom and dad. Okay, then I'm gonna take my ice pick, which I'm sure you guys all have at home. We did it, everyone. I can officially survive living in the jungle. I wanna add one cup of coconut water. So I think I mentioned the hot Cheetos. You wanna roll your citrus to yield more juice. Ooh, it smells really nice. I'm going to be adding this much lemon juice, which is about two whole lemons. After this, we're going to be adding green tea. A good amount of matcha. Beautiful. I'm gonna add some sugar. So somehow I grabbed powdered sugar and not regular sugar, but we're gonna make it work because what's life without improvising? A general rule of thumb is you wanna match the sweet to the citrus. So we're gonna let the sugar dilute in this mix. And lastly, my friends, we're going to be adding alcohol. The first thing I'm gonna be using is called Batavia Arak. This is an Indonesian rum distilled from molasses and red rice that gives it a really funky flavor. And the reason why I'm using this is because this is often thought about as the ingredient you need for milk punch. So if you do not have Batavia Rock, a lot of people don't consider it a true milk punch. This has got some funk. Woo! I know I'm not a huge measurement person. I poured a little under a cup, about two third cup of it. Just for good measure, I feel like that's a good amount of alcohol that's not too boozy because I'm adding more. So a lot of people like to use port wine in their milk punch, but this is worth a shot and we're using matcha. So I can't use port wine. Instead, I'm using sake because we're sophisticated here. So we're gonna add, I would say about the same as the spirit of Batavia Rock. 
Look at that two-third cup. This is ready to be incorporated. As good as a Lucky Charms milk smelled and tasted, I am concerned with how it's going to incorporate all together. I've done milk punches, but I've never done it with marshmallows, so I'm a little bit hesitant to see how it tastes. So you can tell it's already starting to separate, which is good. I wanna let this sit for like 20, 30 minutes and see where we're at. And then once it settles, you'll see it start to really collect the clump. Then I'll start to strain it out and we're gonna have ourselves a party. While that milk punch is chilling, I'm gonna take advantage of my time and I am going to make the sabayon, which I'm nervous about because I hope it comes out frothy like I imagine. Sabayon is an egg yolk based, almost like a custard cream that you typically add on fruit, dessert, and in this case, clarified milk punch. Okay, so the process is we're going to whisk egg yolks. It's complicated because separating egg whites is pretty easy. Separating egg yolks, there's a few different ways. The way that I found is you crack all the eggs first and then you scoop out the yolk separate. So, you know, hands are clean. This is not like the best feeling in the world, but it is interesting. Anything for Shane. So next, I'm going to whip the egg yolk with some sugar. What makes a sabayon is you gotta add alcohol. So a lot of people add vermouth, a lot of people do their own take. Again, I'm adding creme de menthe because it's Lucky Charms themed and it's gotta be green, otherwise, what am I even doing here? Okay, I'm adding just a little bit because I think a little goes a long way and I'm gonna whisk it. People ask me, why don't you electronically whisk? I like things old school, you know, they didn't have this in the 1800s. I'm making 1800 style things. So I'm gonna whisk the egg yolk. I just realized, yes, I was sous vide -ing. You know, I like to explore all methods, old and new. I don't discriminate. Oh, this is interesting. There is no way this is gonna thicken. Okay, I did see a method before where it's like you add this over heat and it thickens, but I don't have heat. So, so, uh, okay, plan B. Plan, it's okay. Plan B. So I do have a backup plan because I was afraid this is not gonna work. Oh. I wanna make a whipped cream now. Scratch the sabayon of it all. We're gonna do a whipped cream. We should do a game where it's like the loser has to take a shot of this. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy, but all right, in the garbage this goes. I'm gonna, you know, add some heavy whipping cream. Oh yeah, yeah, that's nice and thick. So I think this will have a better effect than the Sabillon because it's going to be more whipped. What I was afraid of is I didn't want it to run into the drink. I want it to be two separate components. So adding it into the whipped cream dispenser is gonna give it like a fluffiness that it won't melt into the drink. And we're gonna add some sugar. I think a classic whipped cream, you just add like a little vanilla. And lastly, it's gotta be green. That's the alcohol. Let's stir this. I wanna make sure it's a nice color. This smells so good. Okay, somebody else needs to smell this. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah, 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 right? It's like a yeah. shamrock shake. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Like that same vibe. shamrock shake realness. Okay, so now I have my mix in here. We are ready to activate the whipped cream. Okay, so I have my handy dandy charger. And apparently how you know, it's- Oh my gosh, I'm not a pro. Oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Okay, I'm recovered. I'm gonna add the charger and apparently you have to hear the hiss. So we're gonna give this some shake. And in theory, <laughs> this should be good. But you know, things go wrong here. Please work, please work, please work. I'm branding that. I feel confident. I got a swagger to me now. Like, try this Lucky Charms milk punch with my mint de creme. All right, so now we're nearing the home stretch and I've been thinking about how I'm gonna incorporate the Lucky Charm oat pieces. So this is the part where I'm going to crush up with my handy dandy mallet with some sea salt. But I was like, wait up, you should add something else to it. And I was thinking Lucky Charms, Marshmallow, graham crackers? While I'm not making a s'more, doesn't mean I still can't use graham crackers. I'm gonna take the oat pieces and then one big block of graham cracker and a half. So I wanna get this as fine as possible because I don't want there to be large pieces when you're eating. I want this to be more of a sprinkle, like a dust, like cinnamon. 
I mean, that's pretty amazing. The milk punch has been sitting for over 30 minutes, so I think it is ready to go. This looks so crazy, but I swear this is how it's supposed to look. The milk is supposed to start to curdle, which is part of the reaction, and basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna strain it out. So I have my cheesecloth over here, and you're just gonna layer it over the strainer, and we're gonna start to strain. What should happen is the liquid should go down, and we should be left with the curds. But the end product should be cloudy clear. Easy peasy. All right, so we're gonna strain it back into a bowl. This is going to be strain number two. This should be able to catch everything that the other one didn't catch. So the last part is we're gonna pour this over a coffee filter, and this will make sure it comes out clear. But this is the final product. So we're gonna pour this over ice with the whipped cream, with the crushed oat pieces, and we're golden. So I thought this would be a little more pastel looking because of all the marshmallows. I think because that's all strained out, you get what's actually in this, which is matcha and sake and coconut water. This solution still came out a little cloudy. We still want a clearer consistency. So I strained it one more time and the solution on the bottom is what it should look like. The result is a very silky and smooth Finish. Can you believe that there is once Lucky Charm marshmallows in this? At last, it is time to assemble. We got our milk punch here. Basically, you take a glass, a little rocks glass, pour it over a big block of ice over here. I wonder if I add one more ice if that's too much. No, it's beautiful. Wow, this is a mountain of goodness. I wanna sprinkle some Lucky Charm graham cracker dust on top. Just a sprinkle of salt. And there you have it, the Shane Rock Punch. Can't wait for Shane to try this. This is something else. Shane! Ricky! Hello! My champion! My, oh my gosh, my biggest supporter. Oh, I've got oh. such a thirst, Ricky. <laughs> you came dressed I wore green, I wore green exactly. for the occasion. I wanted to, exactly. to really Irish it up. I don't think I have any Irish blood in me, maybe like 2% and a lot of weird European people got together That's over the ages enough. and made me. Oh, I'd like to commend you off the bat because when I wrote my letter to you, oh, I wanted you to follow your bliss and, and create something that you know you, you were proud of, but um, I really love a milk punch. Do you and mind? I didn't mention it. And after the fact, I was like, Lucky Charms was perfect for a milk punch. I should have told him to work some, some milk into there. So I'm very excited. Do you think I right? should yeah. whipped cream, drink, let it? Oh, like dance together? Yeah. I think you should do both. You should try the whipped cream. On its finish, own. This, Down. Okay. On its own? Yep. And then the dance, because I don't know what the dance well, tastes like. So well, that's, you'd be the first the fun to try it. this. Isn't that the fun of it? Okay. Oh. Didn't even mention, love a little bit of salt on a sweetness. Yes! Brings out the sweetness. It's a makes cycle. You, makes you appreciate the sweetness more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's absolutely delicious. I am It's curious. incredibly smooth. Yeah, yeah. So when you add the milk, it has a really silky texture. Yeah, there's no way this is, this, my face is gonna be an absolute mess after this, but here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. Better, worse, different? Better. Oh, really? Yeah. Together? Really good. Really? Really good. The sweetness of this oh. with the savory, and then you get a little extra up there. I was explaining earlier, I was like, I want to tantalize Shane's taste buds. You tantalize me. Okay, beautiful, okay. I tantalized Shane. I, I appreciate that, I was nervous. I was sweating. I yeah. was, I had to dump out some bad sabayon and I think it's worth a shot. <laughs> <laughs> we did it, folks. Ooh, wait, real quick. Would you consider garnishing it with a tiny green hat? Do you love a little theatricality? Yeah, wait, that is so much better. That's be right. I could have done this without you. Can I be your understudy? Oh my gosh, I'd be honored. <sighs> Donut watcher, I quit. <laughs> okay, no more puppets, he's dead. What's this now? <laughs>